Hello. All right, it's time to read for the kiddos and you adults who join in. Getting near to the end of book one in my edition, uh, Building on the Rock, a collection of Christian stories for children. This is something that uh, my friend up at Puritan Reformed Theological Seminary and pastor of the Heritage Netherlands Church in Grand Rapids uh, had a hand in a few years ago with a couple of his uh, colleagues. And as they gathered up these stories from around the world, and, uh, and so it's something we read to our kids through the years, and some of them multiple times, and, uh, and now sharing with you. So this one is called The Chimney Sweep. The Chimney Sweep. Now you know what that is, children, if you have a chimney that works. Uh, chimney sweeps are people who come and they clean the inside of your chimney where the smoke goes out and uh, they clean the firebox and they inspect it to be sure it's all in good order, uh, not, not a fire hazard. So that's who a chimney sweep is. We have one who is uh, located in uh, Lenore City. And uh, that reminds me, I've got to call him and have him come before the season gets busy and uh, check our our chimneys to be sure that uh, they're clean and ready to be used this winter when it gets cold. Here we go. About 250 years ago, boys often worked as chimney sweeps. They had to climb inside chimneys to scrape and sweep away the soot. Now, let me say, my chimney sweep doesn't climb up in the chimney. They hired the young boys and girls to do it, mainly boys uh, back then, uh, because they were small and they could get up in there and do the work. And largely the openings of the chimneys were larger back then. Now they do it with, with uh, all sorts of mechanisms. Some of them are automated. They put up in there and they spin around and clean the sides off. And uh, it's, it's really kind of fun to watch them do it. But back then, the little guys would crawl up in there and sweep the soot off. This was hard work for these unhappy children because being very unhealth, because besides being unhealthy for them. It was unhealthy for them to be taking all this in. They didn't wear masks back then. This is a true story about a little chimney sweep named Charles. Charles' parents were the Count and Countess of Belleville. That meant that the King of England had made Charles' father a ruler over a county called Belleville. The Count of Belleville died when Charles was only a few months old, so the Countess was left to raise this child alone. She loved him very much. Her greatest desire for Charles was that he would receive a new heart from the Lord while he was still young. But it seemed that the more she prayed for Charles's conversion and the more she talked to her son about the Lord Jesus, the less interest he showed. He was disobedient and he was stubborn and always tried to change the subject when his mother taught him from the Bible. He daydreamed whenever the word of God was read to him and paid no attention when his mother prayed aloud at mealtimes. This made the countess so sad, and she often cried, but she didn't punish Charles when he was naughty and rude. This only made him more daring in his sinful ways. Well, she should have. The Bible says, we spare the rod of discipline, we spoil the child. Um, at least that's the sentiment of the scriptures. We are not supposed to withhold the rod because that can lead to many problems. But she did. She did it for good reason. She didn't want him to think that because he didn't believe in Jesus, she was going to spank him. That if she'd explain that it's because he was being rude to her and she was supposed to honor her mother and uh, he should have 
she, he, she should have explained that. But now he's even more daring because she doesn't discipline him. One day, the countess was sitting in her little study writing a few letters when a servant entered. He waited impatiently until she looked up. Madam, he said nervously, we can't find Charles. We think he is lost. We looked for him for more than an hour. The countess's face turned pale. What? Oh, not my little Charles. Did you tell the police? Did you really look everywhere? Servants were sent throughout the city to try to find the little boy. The countess even had some papers printed describing her son and offering a large reward. Several people came to tell the countess that they'd seen a boy that matched the description, but when the police investigated, he always turned out to be another child. Finally, a woman came and told the countess she had seen a little boy about five years old throwing stones in the river. When she had returned a short time later, the boy was gone. The countess was brokenhearted. She knew Charles loved to go for walks to the river. She had always forbidden him to go there alone, for she was afraid he would fall in and drown. She tried to tell herself that that was what happened. But somehow she could not believe that her dear son was dead. Three years passed without any news of Charles. He would be eight today, she thought, sadly, on his birthday. The countess looked carefully at each little boy she met. Sometimes she would stop them to question them. Always she was disappointed. That summer she went to visit some friends in the country for several weeks. She had arranged for some repairs to be done to her home. And she would rather be away while this was taking place. But after three weeks, her friends received a message that their daughter was very sick and that she wanted them to be with her. They offered the countess the use of their home while they were gone, but she decided rather to return home. When she arrived, the servants and some painters were hard at work in the dining room. Then she noticed a little boy leaning against the wall near the fireplace. He was thin and pale and large tears left white streaks on his dirty face. What's the matter, little boy? She asked. Nothing, ma'am, answered the boy. We're cleaning your chimney. My master is on the roof checking if I did my job okay. He'll be down soon. Well, why are you crying? Because the little boy tried to talk, but soon was shaking with sobs. Please tell me what's wrong, child. I'm scared my master will beat me again, he said tearfully. Does he beat you often? Almost every day, ma'am. But why? Because I don't make enough money. He kept looking toward the door, afraid his master would hear him. When I come in at night after I've been out all day, and nobody has asked me to clean their chimney. Then he says that I've been playing all day. But that's not true. It's not my fault if nobody asks me. I call as loud as I can. I knock at people's doors, but nobody wants me to clean their chimney. But sometimes you do get work, don't you? And then he doesn't beat you, does he? Yes. But then he says I don't climb fast enough, or that I don't make them clean enough, or that I made a mess in the house. When I come down, he hits me, but I'm always doing my best, ma'am. Yesterday, I hurt my leg and my pants ripped. The poor child cried as he showed the countess his badly scraped leg. The countess asked the servant to get a bandage. How much do you earn? continued the countess. Nothing, except he gives me my food, but it really isn't enough. When I go to bed, I'm always hungry. I think I'll talk to your master about this, she said. Oh, no, please don't, ma'am. He'll just beat me again when we're gone. I don't complain to anybody, only at night to... To whom? asked the countess. Well, to God. What do you say to him? The countess gently cleaned and bandaged the sore leg. 
I asked him to take me back to my mom. He answered, the tears filling his eyes again. So you have a mother, the countess said. I do. She's a very nice mother. I wish I could go to her. Then I wouldn't be so sad. Don't you know where she lives? The countess seemed surprised. No, all I can remember is a big house and a nice yard with a wall around it. Then he stopped. It was, it was like this house. I could see lots of trees out of the windows. My mom was like you, except she didn't wear black clothes. Lady Belleville suddenly felt weak all over and sat down in the nearest chair. Taking the boy by the hand, she drew him to her side, not minding at all his grimy clothes. Has the Lord ever answered you, my child? she asked. Not that prayer, but I'm sure he will hear me one day. Why are you so sure? she asked. Because he said so in his word. So you believe that God hears prayer? Yes, ma'am. He's already heard some of my prayers. I prayed that I could learn to read and that I could have a Bible. And a nice man gave me a New Testament one day. And he taught me how to read a little bit. Sometimes I feel so happy when I pray. You feel happy. What do you say in your prayers, then? I say that my mommy taught me my, by heart. And what was that prayer? Say it for me. Lady Belleville's heart was pounding. The little boy knelt at her side, folded his hands, and closed his eyes. In a trembling voice, he said, Lord, convert me and change my heart. Teach me to love thee and to love others as Jesus has said. Amen. My child, cried, Miss, uh, cried the countess, hugging him closely. You're my son. Charles looked at her with an expression of bewilderment on his tear-stained face. I'm your mother, she said, sobbing out loud. Then she knelt down beside her son and exclaimed from the fullness of her heart, Oh, Lord! Forgive me for having offended thee by my unbelief and for doubting thy promise. I've been so impatient. I've prayed so often for his conversion, but I was so unwilling to wait, and yet thou hast heard me. At this moment, Charles' master entered, mas Charles's master entered the room and was very much amazed at seeing the little chimney sweep and the lady both on their knees. The countess to ask him to explain how he had gotten Charles in his possession. The man told her, A man came to me one day and said he was the boy's father. He'd given him to me if I paid him a hundred dollars. The last I heard of him was that he was very sick. Perhaps he's dead now, I don't know. When Lady Belleville explained that Charles was her son, the master seemed suddenly in a hurry to leave, realizing he could be imprisoned or fined for such an offense. The countess got the address of the man who had sold Charles, and that same evening she went to see him. The man was very rude and cursed loudly when she asked him to tell her how he had found Charles. At first he pretended to know nothing, but when the countess kept questioning him, he told her little bits at a time. He admitted that he had kidnapped Charles, who had jumped over the garden wall. He then told him to the man he then sold him to the man Charles was working for. The man was afraid that the countess would inform the police, but she was so happy to have her son back that she told him she forgave him. She left a little tract for him to read about Jesus and returned home with a song in her heart. Every year since then, the countess celebrated this happy day in an unusual way. The servants found as many chimney sweeps as they could, washed them up good, gave them new clothes, and brought them into the dining room. There they were served a delicious meal. Afterwards, Lady Belleville told the remarkable story of her lost son. She told these children how the Lord had answered her prayers and Charles's prayers in such a wonderful way. The countess tried her best to find better homes for all the older boys and good homes for the younger ones. 
Many times these boys would come to thank her for her kindness to them, and sometimes they could also tell her what the Lord had done in their hearts. It's a great story, isn't it? There's a picture of her gathering all the little chimney sweep boys around her table each year to celebrate that her son, who had been rude and mean to her, God had saved and brought back to her. All right, that's a long one for this week, but I'm sure you enjoyed it and learned lots. Bye-bye. God bless.